Hard as it may be to believe, nearly a decade has passed since Steve Carell uttered his churlish last words and walked away from his role as Michael Scott, a small-screen character that made him a household name. But why did Steve Carell leave The Office after season 7? In April 2010, Steve Carell made the first public mention that his days in the fictional Dunder Mifflin office were possibly numbered. He told the BBC that because his contract for The Office only ran through season 7, the then forthcoming season would, quote, probably be his last year on the series. According to interviews published in Andy Green's book, The Office, The Untold Story of the Greatest Sitcom of the 2000s, a lack of internal response to Carell's comment about season 7 potentially being his last actually made the actor feel like it was time to leave. Brian Whittle, who worked as a boom operator and sound mixer on The Office, explained the sequence of events in the book. Carell was doing a radio interview and he haphazardly mentioned, almost unconsciously, that it might be his last season. He was kind of thinking out loud, but he did it in an interview in public and it created news. Then, what he said was the people connected to the show had no reaction to it. Whittle continued, When he realized he didn't get any kind of response from them, he thought, Oh, maybe they don't really care if I leave. Maybe I should go do other things. Elsewhere in the same book, hairstylist Kim Ferry corroborated Whittle's story, further noting that Carell had told NBC Brass that he planned on signing a new office contract that would be good, quote, for another couple of years. According to Ferry, however, network executives simply didn't reach out to him about negotiating a new deal. He planned on staying on the show. He told his manager, and his manager contacted NBC and said he's willing to sign another contract for a couple years. So all of that was willing and ready and on their side honest, and the deadline came for when NBC executives were supposed to give him an offer, and it passed, and they didn't make him an offer. She continued, noting that Carell didn't want to leave the office behind, he simply had no other choice. Carell was like, look, I told them what I want to do. I don't want to leave. I don't understand. It just is mind-boggling how that happened, and I feel bad because I think a lot of people think he did leave the show on his own merit, and it's absolutely not true. I'm telling you, he really wanted to stay, and it devastated all of us because he was the heart of our show. Casting director Allison Joan called the whole situation, quote, absolutely asinine since Carell wanted to stay on the show. She stated, as I recall, he was going to do another season, and then NBC, for whatever reason, wouldn't make a deal with him. The Office producer Randy Cordray offered another element that contributed to Carell's departure, the arrival of Bob Greenblatt, who became the chairman of NBC Entertainment in 2011. Allegedly, Greenblatt, quote, was not as big a fan of The Office as we wished he would have been. Cordray noted his belief that Carell likely would have stayed on the show if there was more respect coming from NBC. For what it's worth, Greenblatt maintained that he, quote, couldn't do anything about Carell leaving the series since he believed it was already happening before his promotion. Why are you the way that you are? Honestly. Like so many television breakouts before him, once Carell left the small screen, he sought to achieve big screen glory. Carell's movie cred has taken a few hits of late, but he still managed to carve out an impressive slate of comedic and dramatic projects since making the switch to movies. All the while, he's been boasting a blockbuster animated franchise with the Despicable Me film series, lending his voice to the villain-turned-hero Gru. Heck, Carell even claimed an Oscar nomination for his wildly unsettling turn as John DuPont in 2014's Foxcatcher. It's hardly surprising that Carell would find such career success on both big and small screens. The actor didn't officially break through to the mainstream until The Office hit the airways in 2005, but he'd been plugging away in Hollywood for years, with supporting and creative roles on TV fare like The Dana Carvey Show and Jon Stewart's The Daily Show. As for Carell's film roles, he had already stolen scenes from the likes of Jim Carrey and Bruce Almighty and Will Ferrell and Anchorman before claiming the role of Michael Scott in 2005. Not to mention his breakout starring role in the same year with The 40-Year-Old Virgin. I was walking down the street, and a race car pulls up, and the guy says, Hey, you're funny. You're the funniest guy I've ever seen. Or my name is not Dale Earnhardt. <laughs> as many roles as he's played in the years since leaving the office behind, Carell's work as Michael Scott is iconic. So much so that fans and reporters alike continue to hound Carell about his time on the series and the possibility of reprising his role in a potential reboot of the show. However, Carell continues to shoot down the idea at every turn, albeit with loving insight. He told Collider, I don't think we can recapture that same magic. I just wouldn't want to make the mistake of making a less good version of it. Dunder Mifflin. Any jobs going? No, not right now. Just let me know. All right, see you around. Yeah. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite TV shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.